Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. When Ontario NDP MP Mike Sullivan had the choice between retirement or running for office, he chose to run. He was not successful the first time, but he was the second, and it's been an enjoyable whirlwind ever since for this father of seven. Mike Sullivan joins me now to talk about life beyond politics. Mike Sullivan, welcome to Beyond Politics. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So, you um, tell me a little bit about yourself, so that we can, so that I can establish uh, who you are and help our viewers understand where you're from. Uh, tell me the riding that you represent. I am uh, representing York South Weston, okay, which is in the northwest kind of central part of Toronto. And had a career in politics always been what, exactly what you were looking for? Never, not <laughs> ever in my entire life did I think about this. Is that right? Yep. So you're, um, you've been here for, I mean, I was going to say not too long, but it's actually been... Uh, it's just over, almost two years. Almost two years yeah. now. Isn't that something, how, yeah. how quickly time flies? Two-year anniversary is coming up. Wow. Is it, given that you never had any thought that this is what you do with your life, is this, is it what you expected? Here in Ottawa? Um, some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, it, there is way more partisanship than I thought there would be. I thought, and maybe that's because the last few years were uh, minority governments and so people tended to get along, but now uh, it's extremely polarized. Right. And uh, that's awkward, especially when you're on the wrong side of the polarization. Yeah. It's awkward to deal with because you, you feel so um, powerless to actually get the right things done. Really? Do you, do you honestly feel powerless? In some things. Yeah. I mean, there are some. There are certainly some advantages to being a member of parliament that you can help people that you couldn't have before. Right. And so individual cases, there's all kinds of things that I and my office can do. But yeah. in terms of the big picture stuff, the, the, the budgets and the direction and all of that kind of stuff that the government, that the government has taken the country, that is frustrating. Yeah. Um, Tell me about the decision to run, because I understand that you were pretty much just considering retirement at that mm -hmm. stage. That you'd I um, was approached by uh, Paul Ferreira, who was the, at the time he approached me, he'd been a friend for s several elections. He'd been running for, uh, for the NDP for several elections, starting in 2004, I guess. Right. And uh, in 2007, he was elected as the member of provincial parliament in, uh, for the same riding. And so partway through that short period of time that he was the member of provincial parliament, he asked me to run federally if the federal election came up. So this would have been the summer of 2007. And I had never even considered running before, before he asked. But um, uh, Andre and my wife and I um, thought about it mm -hmm. over the period of uh, a few weeks and uh, thought, okay, what, uh, I would like to be able to do more than I'm doing now. I'd become involved in a lot of community uh, issues over the previous eight or nine years and um, thought that maybe I could make a difference. So I said yes. You were unsuccessful in your first attempt. Yep. And sometimes that makes people think, no thanks, had enough of that. <laughs> Yeah, it there, there didn't was. Didn't do that to you. Well, it, there, there was a lot of soul searching afterwards because it was an incredible lot of work. Like that running. More work than you thought. Um, or did you just have no context? You weren't entirely I had, sure. No, about I, you. I mean, I, I knew I'd seen other people run, and I knew that they were out knocking on doors. But uh, my campaign manager, who who mostly was Paul, um, had me out uh, from six in the morning until ten at night every day, seven days a week, with the sm small exception of Sunday mornings. Um, and I'd never actually uh, been d doing anything that consistently for that long. Right. Um, and Except being like a husband and a father. Yeah, other than right. that, other than like that I, the, the, no job had ever taken uh, that many hours of a week. Yeah. And uh, that w was exhausting and... Uh, exhilarating at the same time. At any point, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but given that kind of a schedule, at any point did you say to yourself, what was, like, was, is, am I insane? 
Is this crazy? No, because you, you get caught up in the moment. Um, and, and you discover just how interesting it is talking to thousands upon thousands of people with their stories, with their tears on the doorstep, with their um, in, in the community housing buildings, with their pleading to get them out of there. Um, you realize that there's so uh, many people that need so much help that um, how could I stop? So I didn't stop. Um, uh, but it, it took its toll on you know, I, on the family because I didn't see very much of them for six weeks, and um, it was it was exhausting. But um, I had promised the riding association prior to 2008 that if I did run, I would run at least twice. So you'd promise that. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. So despite my. You know, and I thought, I'm going to win it in 2008, so it won't sure. be a problem. But, of course, I didn't. Right. Um, and so despite my uh, discovering just how much work it was and any misgivings I might have had about um, the organization or anything else, that I was committed to running a second time, and I did. Were you reluctant to run, though? Like, were you thinking to yourself, I wish I hadn't committed to this? <laughs> there were times that crossed my mind, but only yeah. fleetingly. I mean, yeah. it, there were times when, you, you know, something somebody says or does irritates and you go, well, maybe I shouldn't run. But it all came back to, no, I made a promise. Yeah. And I keep stick and to my won. promises. And I won. Yeah. Yay. Wow. That must have been a good feeling then. It was <laughs> exhilarating. It was absolutely just the, 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 we had, we had a very, very small restaurant for the victory party. <laughs> And it was you couldn't couldn't swing a cat in there. There was a uh, hundred and fifty odd people in a room, space the size of uh, maybe forty would have been crowded. Oh my goodness! And uh, it was exhilarating and fun and amazing. And then the journey began. So, let's step back to the beginning of the journey, mm-hmm. um, and that stepping back to to your childhood. Um, you were actually not born in Canada. No, I was born in Detroit. Okay. What did your parents do there? My father taught at the University of Detroit, and uh, my mother's a uh, homemaker. Right. Were they Canadian or were they um, were No, they Americans? Uh, both American. Okay. With, uh, in, on my father's side, some pretty deep Canadian roots. Right. So. Is that how you ended up here? He got a job teaching English at the University of Windsor. Right. And uh, that was, I, th- I think that he was looking for that. He wanted to come to Canada. Okay. Um, That's not a very big jump. No, from Detroit you to Windsor. You could have kept living. <laughs> you couldn't keep living because it's no. too hard to cross the border. Yeah. But um, I, I always wondered, was there something else that, that actually drove them to come back across the border? And I, did I you ask them? I did, but there was never any straight answers. And you wonder, you know, it was, it was the time of McCarthyism. Was there some um, feeling in my, my father particularly that this was not a good place to be at that point in time? But they never said. Um, one of the things they did say was it made it easier to get CBC radio because the <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't get it on the other side of the river. So, so um, that they they moved to Canada, took the family with them. Uh, my and were happy had, Canadians. I mean, this oh, yeah. it, it, this was yeah. that was the right move for them. Yeah, my um, my mother was uh, nine and a half, eight and a half months pregnant when we moved, uh, and so my little brother Danny was born three weeks after we moved in. Wow. And uh, so when I th- I was just a kid, I didn't realize the struggle that was for her, but sure. it was amazing that she managed it. How many kids are in your family? There's six of six us. Six of you? Yeah. You have five other siblings? Yep. That is a big family. It is a big family, yes. Yeah. How many kids did your parents have when they made the move already? The, there were three, and the fourth was oh born my gosh. when we That's arrived. That's really substantial. And, and it was before Medicare. Right. So... Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it was because of uh, the, the relationships they already had with doctors. But my mother went back across the border to have my brother Dan in a Detroit hospital. Wow. Uh, but I still remember when uh, the University of Windsor had got Green Shield, my dad came home absolutely thrilled to bits that there was now a medical plan that uh, w- was an insurance scheme yes. that would actually make it easier for them to... Uh, I guess you have, would with six kids. To have medicine uh, available to them. I'd be dancing them. in yeah. the halls, too. Yeah. My goodness. Uh, and then, of course, Tommy Douglas brought Medicare in shortly thereafter, and it, it became not... Ne- we never talked about it at that point. Because, you didn't, Because right? we didn't need to. Were you a political family? 
Um, there was always some uh, interest. There was My parents were very interested in what was going on. They paid attention to American politics a lot because they'd grown up there. And so when there was an American election on, they were always talking about it. I remember my mother um, talking about Adlai Stevenson, um, telling me that I was born right after um, the uh, the election that elected uh, Eisenhower the first time in 1952, and she'd been to the polls and then went and had a baby kind of thing. Right. Um, so they were um, conversant enough about it. My dad ran for the school board once, lost big time, didn't run again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so there, w- there was always, um, and they always voted NDP. And we always they did, eh? So oh, there yeah. was that current going through your house. Oh, there was absolutely. a strong strong sense. labor so, sense, okay. strong okay. Um, NDP commitment. But our part of Windsor, though it was urban, right? W- always the, the boundary for the county riding, which was Gene Whalen's riding, included our little subdivision, and so they could never get an NDP <laughs> MP. <laughs> <laughs> they always had to deal with Gene Whalen, which always frustrated them on no end. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, so you uh, you had a not particularly uh, political household, but a household that was aware of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Did you have big discussions around the dinner table that involved, uh, you know, that involved all of the children as well, or was always? It I mean, the dinner was always loud. All of us. All Wasn't of us at the loud? table, it was loud. Yeah. Um, uh, my grandmother lived with us for nine years from when she had a stroke. Uh, she came to live with us. There was nine of us around the dinner table every night. And um, all there were always discussions about the events of the day. But being a kid, you don't yeah, really, you don't really put register. it into into the, the context that it is. Sure. Uh, I remember my dad had um, plans for a bomb shelter. No kidding. Mm-hmm. He never wow. built it, but Holy there God. it was. Were you? Do you remember being slightly? Yep, absolutely. Unnerved as a oh, child. Oh yes, absolutely. And uh, it, it was one of those things we, as kids at school, talked about. Yes. But our parents were trying to be calm. Right? Sure. <laughs> so of they course. didn't talk about it either. Yeah, but it as was they there. Supplies and water. As they, yeah, yeah. Or just, in my dad's case, bought the design and then. He didn't ever do anything, so right. it, it never really became an issue. But they were there. We found them. Huh. Amazing. Um, did you have a sense of what you wanted to do as a child like when you grew up? <sighs> um, in high school, I, I kind of thought I wanted to teach. And so I began a university um, career that I thought was going to end with me teaching. Right. But I didn't go there. Did you have to pay for your own... Um, University education. I mean, did you have yep. to work to? Yeah, yep. but it was so much easier then. Yeah, I bet it. Like tuition was six hundred dollars a year. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Isn't so that amazing? I could earn six hundred dollars in a easily in a summer. Okay. A little more than I would earn about a thousand dollars probably, and that right. was enough to pay my tuition. My parents paid my room and board with friends in Toronto. That's so, very generous. Um, but it was cheap. Yes. And uh, or at least seems cheap and. Uh, uh, because tuition was so inexpensive, right. there was never any thought given to it, right? I paid it, but yeah. and I paid all the other expenses of living. Um, so when I, long about January, I'd run out of money, and so I'd keep a dime in my pocket in case I had to make a phone call, and I rode my bike everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Did you work during your university years no. as well? No, no, you just studied. Just studied. Yeah. And uh, I, in a sense, well, I volunteered at the university radio station, but that wasn't work. But right. it was kind of work. But did you think a career in media? Because you worked, you ended up working for the CBC, right, for a fairly long time. Did you ever think that you'd be on the other side of the camera or the microphone? Um, there were times when I wondered about it, um, but I I didn't have it as a goal. Right. Um, the, uh, the the university um, radio station led to. Um, me seeking out a job at the CBC in Windsor for summer uh, jobs, and then that led in turn to a full-time job at CBC in Toronto. Yeah, because you had a degree in um, science? Math and physics Math and computer and physics. science, yeah. Which lends itself very well to broadcasting. <laughs> it does, it does, and it did in that case because the CBC in Toronto was about to computerize their operation. And right. They, 
they saw my degree and said, okay, let's take this guy. Of course, I had nothing to do with what they were thinking of. Right. I just had, I knew what a computer was. Sure. I guess it was more than... Which is probably more than most people did yeah, at, at that, that time, frankly. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was 1974, and it was pretty new. Did your parents approve of your career choice? I think so. I don't think they were. They were, were just ever. glad you had a job. And, and I was out of the house. And you were not underfoot. <laughs> and not underfoot. They weren't having to feed you. I never you. came back. Yeah. <laughs> the kids you probably heard from your mom back. on that. Oh, no. I never I, came back. No, no, in terms of live there. Yes, of course. Right. Other siblings did yeah. you know, go and come back. But, yeah. Um, no, we visited all the time because it was they were in Windsor. You, um, you became fairly involved also in um, labor issues. Is that... Yep. A fair way of saying it? It is. Okay. Um, I didn't ever have any real interest or knowledge in it until I was working at CBC. And then I started to become aware of what being in a union was, aware of what a collective agreement was. Uh, when you're sitting in master control at night with nothing to do and there's a book on the table that's a collective agreement, you might read it. And, and that might. Got, you might. You might read it. <laughs> and I got interested. Not everyone would. Not everyone would, but there's nothing else to do. Right. So I forgot to bring my own book, so <laughs> I'll read that one. And um, that then hooked me in, in um, collective agreements, in law, in uh, following how that worked, in, uh, and then eventually in running for office in the local when I was working in Toronto. Yeah. Um, that's... It's interesting how um, the roots of that were all formed in your family, though, right? I mean, yes. those discussions and your your parents' th um, thinkings and leanings shaped uh, your own discussions and Absolutely. your children's opinions, and then you, your, or you as children, your opinion, and then you, it's kind of a, th a, a theme throughout your entire Which I didn't life. recognize as a theme, right. but so it was a theme. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then tell me about... Um, Tell me about your wife, because you now, uh, you're a blended family. Right. And um, so in there, you married first, originally when you were younger, I'm assuming. Right. And then um, now you, together, you and your wife, Andre, have seven children. Yes. That's a lot of children, too. I know. And when I was growing up in a household with six. You didn't think that was so much? I said to myself, I'm never going to do this really? to my own. <laughs> no, I'm never going to do this. I'm, there's just way too many kids. Yeah. And then, well, and then not did, only seven. did you do it, yeah. because you each brought three to the marriage, right? Right. right. But then you had another we one. We had another one, yeah. I yeah. know. I know. Oh, my gosh. What were you thinking? They're, they're all wonderful. They're I, all wonderful. And, yeah. uh, and I wouldn't have I it any other way. And I they all vote for you. Uh, well, they don't all live in the riding. That's but too bad. I'm sure they all vote NDP, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, in fact, only one of them lives in the riding, so. So when did you and your wife, Andre, marry? Um, we got together in 1988. Okay. So, so she was we around. Were, we were going through divorces, so we couldn't remarry until yes. later. And, and she was around then very much for these decisions about whether you would become politically active or not. Yeah, several years later. But, yeah. but yes, I mean, we, we made all these decisions together about what we did and where we lived. And um, she had uh, a couple of careers in the meantime, and, um, but I always had the union career yes. with me. Uh, did she approve of your interest in politics? Well, approve is a really strong word. Um, um, let's say she said okay and that it was, um, there was support, no question, um, and that it was a joint decision and that we agreed. <laughs> There's so much more to that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, she How it was, much convincing did she take? Not a whole lot. No. I mean, it was, she could see it was something I wanted to do. Right. And so, but I was listening to her about, is this too much for uh, our family, our marriage, our, you know, our living mm -hmm. situation? And um, so part of her hoped I didn't win, I think. I but not really. I can really. understand that. But no, I can understand, though, because, I mean, you probably as a spouse, you want to indulge your husband's interest or, or right. spouse's interest in something. You want to ensure that they're doing something that they find fulfilling, but on the other hand, it's going to mean major upheaval mm -hmm. in your own life. And right. wouldn't it be great if right. it just didn't happen? Well, yeah, I, although, you know, in hindsight, she, I think she's very happy it did happen. Yeah. So. Does she come up here a lot? Um, it, not in the wintertime because it's too cold in Ottawa, oh. but 
Um, she did come in the, in the wintertime, but yes. it's more frequent in the spring and the summer sure. and fall. So. And Ottawa is a beautiful city at those times of year as it's well. Out, people are smiling outdoors now because yes. the sun's shining and it's yeah. warm again. That's right. It's so nice to see again. Yeah. Uh, what about your kids? Were they involved? I mean, you've said jokingly that you hope they probably vote NDP, but were they involved in the decisions or involved in your campaign? Uh, involved in the campaign, yes. Not involved in the decisions. Yeah. Um, they were mostly left home by the time the, the decisions were made. Sure. Um, but in, in whenever I could, I would involve them in the campaign or in the fundraisers or the um, or, or just the, the general... They're, they're not politically active mm -hmm. in the sense that they're not out there uh, pounding on doors for people and getting involved in wherever they, whatever riding they're in. Right. Um, one of my daughters is now uh, actively involved in her union and is um, very uh, involved in that direction. So when the, there was a protest uh, against the Liberal government, she was out there with a protest sign. and So it made me proud. And <laughs> To know that they're and and uh, that they're interested in the, in mm. that way, but uh, it's they've all got their own families, and it's t tough for them to be able to, um, as as it was tough for me. Mm. I, I didn't really get involved in the political part of the world until after I knew all the kids were looked after, and we didn't have to. Right. Um, I wasn't going to be abandoning them by going off on campaigns. So is this really? Um now that you're in it, what you want to be doing in the years that you thought you'd be happily retired and probably <laughs> having time to yourself. And um, my wife would tell you that I have to have something to do. Okay. <laughs> so, for both of your sakes? Yeah, for both of our sanities. Okay. And so um, this is a natural progression from right. what I did. Um, had I not won, I was prepared to retire, but I would have found something else sure. too. So I couldn't have sat still for very long. I never can. It must have been really a happy moment to know not just that you had won but also that your party was coming to Ottawa as official opposition. That must have been a great feeling. It was amazing. Of course I had never experienced the parliament where the NDP was much smaller. Yes. So my exposure to the party is only as official opposition but it is so amazing to be official opposition and it makes it uh, that much closer to um, to a, instead of being always referred to as the the conscience mm. of the government, right. we are now actually the opposition of the government, right. and have the opportunity uh, in a couple of years to form a government. What was it like the first time you had to stand up in the house? I was um, a little nervous. I, I stood in front of many people over the years as a union rep, so that so it wasn't as intimidating. Not as intimidating, uh, but I learned quickly that I'm not. Um, I'm not good at reading a speech. Okay. I, and uh, the first speech was written. Yeah. It was about the riding. It was not a... Um, it wasn't off the cuff. It wasn't something that was that I was reading... I was doing as, as speaking. And so since then, I've tried very hard not to read uh, words that are written down for me. Do you try to just be more spontaneous, or do you just try to form the thought beforehand? And then I go form in the and thought. I mean, I yeah. I have usually if it's a ten minute speech, I have three points I want to cover. If it's right. twenty minutes, I have six. Yeah. I write the points down and a, maybe a couple of sure. reminders of things to say, yeah. and then I just. Speak. That's great. That's a that's um. I mean, I think some people are really able to deliver an exceptional text. They can really deliver yeah. a speech, but it's a real art form to be able to take points and on the go create a speech around the themes. Right, that's, and that's an what I try and do because I discovered after that first speech that's not what I am, <laughs> so right. I did it the other way. And Can I, you time I'm yourself? Pretty close. Okay, that's why some I say people three. have 14 endings. Yeah. <laughs> do you have 14 endings or are you pretty... Uh, no, I'm pretty close. Okay. Um, so I've, I've come up you know, 30 seconds short on a couple of occasions and I've had the speaker waving his hand yes. at me like it's time to go and having to rush the ending yeah. um, without getting that last point in. Yeah. But generally I've got a fairly... Uh, fa I, I know how long it's going to take me to, do, to deliver uh, a subject or a, a topic and I can add it up and know that I'm at nine minutes and now it's time to wrap up. You are apparently a fan of puns. Me? Do you have a pun Me? czar in your office? Yeah, I do. <laughs> 
bad joke jar is what it is. A yeah. bad joke jar. Bad joke jar. Is it yeah. just bad jokes? Do you collect them? Do you? Are you I one just, of those people who can remember a joke forever? Or? Yes, but I'm also one of those people who can find a way to um, turn a, turn a phrase. Okay. So, and I have friends who do the same thing and who feed me. So, uh, so you, it's twenty five cents that goes into this yeah, jar every time there's something. Bad. And who has to pay it? You Anybody or in the staff? office? No, if it's whoever made the joke. Oh, I see. Puts the, puts so it's a in. very egalitarian Absolutely. joke jar. Yeah, but most of the money's mine. <laughs> What are you going to do with all the money? How much do you have in it? Well, last I looked, there was a you know a twenty and a couple of tens. And wow! <laughs> when did this start? This joke jar? Right at the very beginning. Okay. Yeah, so all right. Well, actually, it was when uh, I hired one of the staffers. Okay. She was the one who invented the joke jar, Deb, in my office. So um, you're the, all going to go out for a well, coffee? or what we what we did with it last year because we had enough last year. We bought um, some. Uh, refreshments, shall we say, yes. for uh, some of the staff that work in our building. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so the post office staff and the cleaning that's staff. That's very nice. And uh, that's so a I lovely think some of the joke you. jar went for that. That's and again, that's Deb. She's uh, amazing. Yeah. I have amazing staff. Absolutely amazing. The staff, staff really does help, doesn't it? Good oh, staff yeah. can make or break. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, tell me, give me a sense of whether you're you have any control over your days. I mean, are you scheduled top <laughs> to bottom? Is that the kind of day that you live I now I do have some Ottawa? control in the sense that um, my wife has said, stay away from Sundays to all the staff or right. you'll earn my wrath. So um, it, I, it isn't 100%, but probably 90% of, of Sunday schedules is, is, is time for me and family and other things I have to do at home. Uh, but the rest of the week, um, it can be... Like today will be uh, from 7 this morning uh, until the plane lands in Toronto at uh, 10 o'clock tonight, and then I get back home, and then I'm on the road at 5.30 tomorrow morning to go to a meeting. And then uh, that's all. So it, it, those kinds of the day... They're definitely not retirement hours. Oh, no. <laughs> There's none of that. There's none of that. And I, I love it. Uh, but I do have some control in the sense that there are enough invitations to events to fill uh, six or seven times the number of time, the amount of time that's available. Right. So I discovered that I can just go to things I'm interested in. Right. I don't have to go to the uh, egg producers marketing board luncheon because right. uh, there aren't a whole lot of egg producers in my riding, and sure. it's, so I can pick and choose the ones that are the ones that are of some interest. There are some that have nothing to do with my portfolio or my writing, but I am interested in the issue, so yeah. I'll go into to those, or I'll try. And I find more more recently that um, events will overtake my ability to go to these things. So I'll schedule it, it'll be there, and then discover, oh, no, I have to be at a human resources meeting that morning, so I can't actually see these people this after, that, that that time because that's overtaken it. So Sounds like a busy life. It is a very busy life. <laughs> I'm really grateful then that you were able to fit us in. It's been a, a pleasure to chat with you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this little bit of my life being uh, visible to your viewers. At least you can sit for yes. 30 minutes. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.